Hey Math 43, I thought we would take a look at a couple of multiple choice bonus questions to get you prepped for this week's discussion. So with everything, let's start with what is the variable? All right, I'm gonna read this question, see if I can find any buzzwords. And with all of these questions, I would encourage you to try and do them on your own first, pause the video, and then come back to it and see how you're doing. But as I look at this, it says the lengths of human pregnancies are normally distributed with a mean of 268 days and a standard deviation of 15 days, what's the probability that pregnancy lasts at least 300 days? All right, lots of buzzwords in there. Uh, one that stands out, right, normally distributed. I see the mean of 268 days. I see the standard deviation of 15. And I see that I'm being asked for a probability. And if you look at these answer options, you can see that those are probabilities because these are all numbers between zero and one. So if I wanna identify my variable, here it is, the lengths of human pregnancies. Now this is a numerical variable. It's continuous numerical because we measure time. On top of that, they told me it was normally distributed, but there are my units, days. All right, so I've got that going on, and now it wants a probability and I, I, can, I can start to piece that together. I'm gonna to draw a graph first because I bet just looking at the variety of these answers, you see these two are pretty small numbers and these are larger. I bet I could at least get it down to, um, I could probably eliminate two of these if I just draw a picture. So here's what I mean. Let me draw my PDF. All right, and then probabilities always along the Y. We've got our variable, right, so this is, um, pregnancy length, and this is going to be in days. Now, because I was told it was normally distributed, right, I was given that it was got the bell curve, 268 and 15 are my parameters, so let me draw my little bell curve here. All right, so we've got 268, All right, and I could add a couple of deviations out. If my deviation is 15, if I added two deviations to that, I would be up at 298, and if I subtracted two deviations from that, I would be down at 238. So that just helps me scale out my x-axis. Now this is asking for the probability of at least 300 days. So I want the probability that x is greater than or equal to 300 days, right? So whenever you hear that phrase, and let me highlight it, at least, that's synonymous with the greater than or equal to symbol, which sometimes can feel counterintuitive because you hear least and you might think less than, but at least means 300 or more, right? So if I wanted to write this out in words, this is 300 or more days. That's why it's gonna get the greater than or equal to. Well, if I look at my variable, if I start inside my parentheses at x being greater than or equal to 300, 300 is way over here, right? There's 300, that's not the best yellow pen. Let me see if I can, I'll use this version of yellow. 300 is over here. And if I wanna go at least 300, that's a pretty small area under the curve, right? So what I can do is I can absolutely rule out C. There was no way that was 98% of the area under my curve, and really it's not even 48%. I'm gonna be picking between these two values. And that's fine. Whenever I need to calculate a normal probability, we're gonna go normal CDF. And it's always low, high, mean, and standard deviation. So let's take a look. Our mean and standard deviation are 268 and 15. And if I think about my low and my high, that has to do with the area that I've shaded. And if we take a look at the area I'm shading, it starts from 300 and it goes up to positive infinity. So I'm gonna go 300, 199, and then when I crunch that number on my calculator, and I'll leave you to crunch that, but you get 0 0.164, so my answer here is A. All right, quick little normal CDF, and we're good to go. All right, number two is a little bit trickier. All right, so scores on a, oops, scores on a standardized test are structured to follow a normal distribution with a mean of 400. If approximately 15% of all scores exceed 581, which of the following values could be the standard deviation? Now, now this one's trickier because I'm not given the standard deviation, 
right? I'm asked for it. But still, some buzzwords that are floating around here. I see I've got a normal distribution, I've got the mean, and I've got a percentile, right? 15% or the top 15% is cut off by 581. And these are test scores. So my variable here is some standardized test score. It's numerical and they're telling me that it's got the bell shape. So I know X is distributed normally with a mean of 400, but I don't know the standard deviation. So that's where we're, we're starting to look at this problem. So let me go draw my PDF. All right, so we've got x on the x-axis, probability along the y. We've got our standardized test scores, standardized. There we go. I'm just gonna assume these are in points. That would probably be my units. And then I know I've got 400 under the peak. Now here's where the fun kicks in. They're telling us that the top 15% is cut off by 581. And I want to specify here, this is the top 15%, which is different than the 15th percentile. So let me go graph that for us. So I think somewhere around here, that's going to be my best, there it'll go into a straight line. All right, I think that if we mark that with 581, and then I shade in here, ooh, that is not the best shading, but what are you going to do? This is 15%, right? The top 15%. But I want to be clear here that if you're talking about the top 15%, that's the same as saying the 85th percentile, right? So we've got the 85th percentile here. And the reason is um, we look at the complement rule. If that's the top 15%, and then 85% has got to be from 581 on down. And that is quite literally the 85th percentile. Now, at this point, I could start to make an educated guess, and here's what I mean by that. So I, I really, especially with multiple choice, it's always good to look at the answers and see if you can eliminate a few on site. So let me, I'm gonna make a graph over here and I'm probably gonna wind up erasing it because I'll need some more space in a bit, but here's what I mean. If we think about our standard normal curve, all right? So if we think about, well, really any bell curve, but I'll, I'll go ahead and use the standard normal. So let me go from P, P of Z and Z. If we think about zero, right, one, two, three, this is not my greatest graph. But we've talked about the empirical rule, and we've talked about how when you get to one standard deviation above the mean, right, when you're at a z-score of one, that you are at the 84th percentile. And the reason for that is we're pretty comfortable with the mean is the 50th percentile because there's 50% from here on down, but we know from the empirical rule we pick up another 34%. So typically, when you are one deviation above the mean, you are at the 84th percentile. And the reason I mention this is because this 84th percentile is pretty close to this 85th percentile. So what I mean by that is this score of 581 is pretty close to one standard deviation above the mean. And if I look at this gap here from 400 to 581, that's a difference of 181. All right? And I know that's just a little bit larger than one standard deviation. And so what I'm saying by that is if I had to guess, right? if I had to guess just based on the empirical rule, I think 125 is too few, I think 250 is too much, and if I was betting, I would bet on 175 because we're pretty darn close to 175, we're at 181. So that would be my guess, but then I'd wanna be sure that it wasn't B also. So here's what you can do, and here's part of why I like multiple choice questions, and I'll, I'll work this over here, is you can test out your answers and see if they work, and this is what I mean by that. So let's take a look at the answer in part B, and I want you to see why this is wrong. If this was gonna be correct, I should be able to do inverse norm on my calculator, put in the 85th percentile with a mean of 400 and the standard deviation from part B at 150, right? If, if B was correct and I put this in, and I can put this in on my calculator, you absolutely can, you're gonna get back 555.5, right? And that is not equal to 581, which is a reason that I can rule out B. And let's check that with C. If I go to inverse norm, 
with my answer on part C, 85th percentile, if this is correct, if we do 175 here in this position, I should get 581. And when you crunch that on your calculator, you get 581.4, which is pretty darn close to 581, which is just confirming that C is our answer. All right, so you have a couple of ways to do it. You could use the empirical rule like I did here, or another great thing is just plug all of these standard deviations in to inverse norm, right? You know you've got the 85th percentile and then just see which one of these deviations work.